Hi, I'm Peggy Pearl. I'm the volunteer director here at St. Johnsbury History and Heritage. And we are celebrating five years of being open and featuring all different aspects of St. Johnsbury's history. We have been very pleased this COVID year to um, have Emily have a project with us here at History and Heritage, and that is the preservation of clothes that we occasionally get into the collection. Um, that is just one of the big things about History and Heritage is the preservation of any of the historical artifacts that we get. Um, so we have thoroughly enjoyed her being a part of us, even in these uh, masked times. And uh, we look forward to working with other Academy students during the years and having them a part of history and heritage. My name is Emily Demers and I am currently a senior at St. John's Bay Academy. This past February, I got the amazing opportunity to travel to Rome, Italy with the school. This trip really sparked my interest in history and helped me establish my capstone topic of saving textile antiquity and teaching the proper preservation of textiles in St. Johnsbury. I connected with the St. Johnsbury History and Heritage Center shortly after deciding on my topic, and we have been working together on solving the issue of poor preservation with a group of gowns from their wedding dress collection. In this video, I will be teaching you how you can properly preserve your own wedding gown to prevent possible damage to it. This technique I'm about to show you works on wedding gowns and just about all other types of garments as well. So first off, we're going to start with the materials that you're going to need to start packing your very own wedding gown. Um, this works with any garment, but what you're going to want to be wearing is these white cloth gloves. I can lay them down here to just see a bit better. But yeah. these cloth gloves are going to protect the garment from the oils that you have on your hands. And those can cause discoloration to your garment. So you want to make sure that you have these on. You're also going to want some acid-free tissue paper, which this is a, a roll that we have here. And the acid-free tissue paper is going to protect your garment from acid as many regular paper and um, storing boxes have acid in them. So the acid can cause discoloration to, as well to your garment. So you wanna make sure you have this to protect it from that. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to first cut a piece of paper. We have this acid-free box here, which we'll be storing our wedding gown in today. Um, so. When first cutting your paper, you want to make sure that you line the box with the paper. So, move these. You just roll it out across the table. We have a straight edge ruler here to help cut. We'll just make it a little long so that it can just barely cover the edges of your box. And you can just take your scissors, and use your straight edge. So the sheet you've just cut, you can move it into your box. And just kind of lightly press it into your box. Make sure that it's covering the sides as well as the bottom. So when you put your garment in, it won't be necessarily touching the box. Now my piece is a bit short, but you would have it kind of folding over the edges of the box, or maybe this edge here, you just kind of fold it over. And then after you put your garment in, you'll just fold those 
last few edges over onto the top. First, you're going to want your box. You've got a top and a bottom, about the same. And then you're going to want to have your acid-free tissue paper, which you will cut and fit to your box to place it inside. You're going to want to have your straight edge and your scissors to cut that to your length and width. And then you're going to want to have your white cloth gloves for when you're handling your garment to put them into the box. All right, so I've gone ahead and already pre-cut some more layers of acid-free tissue paper here. We're going to now start with looking at today's gown that we will be packaging, which I have over here on a mannequin. So this is a wedding gown from 1815. It was worn by Lois Crossman, and she was originally from Peacham, Vermont, but um, she married Mr. Erastus Fairbanks. She wore this gown in 1815 at their wedding, and it's made out of this gray silk fabric, and it has some of this black velvet detailing and some black lace here. And as you may notice, this gown has a couple of tears, like on the arm here. There's some small ones. And then over here on her waist, she has some much larger ones. And those are caused from the gown being stored improperly. So take the arm, for example. This is a very deep crease over here. And so that deep crease has caused these tears in the fabric. When you're packaging your gown, you want to make sure that you kind of stuff it to keep its form and to leave it as creaseless as possible so you can prevent these tears in your fabric. Now I'm going to take this gown off the mannequin. We're going to take the bodice off first, but when you're packaging, you want to start with the skirt because it's the most full. You can just set your bodice aside for now. All right, so I want to show you before I take this off the detailing of this wedding gown here. You know, so it has a small train, but it also has, there'd be lots of petticoats under this in the time of 1815. There's lots of these layers here. There's some more hooks and eyes here used to, to kind of keep the dress on her. Now I have the skirt. Take your skirt over to your box. You're going to have your first layer of tissue in there. We're going to grab the bottom of the skirt here and put it in the box. Now I'm going to choose the end of the skirt to have in the box first. We want to try and leave this as creaseless as possible to prevent those tears. Which can be very difficult with a wedding dress with them being very, very filling. So after you have your, your first layer of the dress, you can go ahead and take another some of this tissue. And just lay it over the top. Push it down lightly. And then you have the second half of your skirt.
skirt over here. Which you can just fold together. And then fold over the top here. be a great idea to put some stuffed tissue in here to kind of keep its form. Okay, so I've just got to grab some tissue paper that I'm going to kind of, you want to ball it up a bit. And then you just want to stick it inside your garment. This is going to kind of help keep its form and make it less likely to crease. Once you've kind of done that and got it as flat as you can, you can take another layer of tissue. And you're ready to put your bodice on. So now you can go ahead and take your bodice of your gown. Sticking it in sideways is a good way to make them fit. Now, like we did with the dress, you can stuff the bodice with some more tissue. I have a little bit already here in the sleeves to help keep the form. I'm going to put some more in the chest area here. particular bodice there is this little bit of a train detailing element which we can in our last layer of tissue here we're going to put over the top you can go ahead and just make sure that those are folded in so when you close the box those don't get caught And now with your top layer, since we have this extra here, holding it in just a bit to cover that, if you can. You're going to fold in all of these flaps anyways, so that will be covered with these over here. So with all of your extra tissue on the side, you're going to fold them in, pushing them down lightly. All right, so now that you have your folds all folded in, you can go ahead and grab the top of your box. I have mine over here. Just going to line up your quarter, corners push them all down. They do get stuck very easily. There we go. Okay. Now, once you have your packaging complete, you want to make sure that you label your box. I have a label over here. Now, this label, it can 
explain the contents of your box or it could be some sort of labeling system as we have on here. And that's gonna help both yourself and others find where your box is, what's inside. It's gonna help keep things organized. Okay, so once you finish packaging, it's very important when you're done that you wanna store it in a safe place because um, humidity and any water or liquid can really affect your gown. So I'm currently in my town's local history and heritage center textile room. Um, I have my box here. And I'm going to place it over here on an empty shelf. That's away from any liquid or humidity. You want to make sure that the space you have is very temperature controlled and that nothing's going to get into it like animals. So this is a very safe spot for my box to be. So in this History and Heritage Center here to control the temperature and conditions in our textile room, we use a system, um, uh, abbreviated PEM, it's used to kind of control the humidity and temperature in the room. It assesses like the probability of mold or mildew in the room itself. And what you do is you keep it in one location for about a year. You don't want to move it. You want to make sure it stays there for about a year before you move it. Congratulations, you now know how to properly preserve your own wedding gown or any other garment that you may have. I'd also like to offer a special thanks to Director of History and Heritage Center, Peggy Pearl, and textile volunteers, Jen Payne and Dale Steen, and the many other members of the History and Heritage Center for helping me with this capstone project. Thank you.